We have Dennis Miller, the mighty Dennis Miller. You know, very few people have ever made me laugh so hard that I fell off the couch. Robin Williams made me laugh so hard. Dennis Miller, I remember his last, it was an HBO special. I just remember laughing so hard. I slid to the floor. He was like just a really, really funny guy and a guy who has had the guts not to follow the herd and not to be a typical Hollywood leftist. So it's always going to be interesting to talk to him, especially on a day like this when the cultural left is in disarray. Hey, is, is Dennis on one? Dennis Miller, like I said, one of the uh, few comedians who has ever made me fall off the couch. I laugh so hard. He's a five-time Emmy Award winner for his uh, show, Dennis Miller Live. He most recently served as host for eight years of the nationally syndicated Westwood One radio talk show, The Dennis Miller Show. He's had four New York Times uh, bestsellers. He's, he is about to start performing live again. He's, he'll, at Saturday, May 19th, he'll be at the Riverside Theater in Milwaukee. Friday, June 15th, he will be at the NYCB Theater at Westbury on Long Island. And in June, he'll be taping his 10th stand-up special. It was one of his stand-up specials that uh, made me fall, literally roll off the couch. I laughed so hard. Dennis, are you there? What's up, young Drew? <laughs> How you doing? Wait, uh gotten so bad in England now that after literally local citizens are beheaded on a bridge in the restaurant district, the mayor rushes out to a podium, Steve Kahn, to say this is not terrorism, but rather the work of a solo crazed individual. And I thought, what did Sadiq Khan turn into the mayor from John? I mean, it's like, oh, Martin, the beaches will be open. We will have to suffer on Amity. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is a, that's all that needs is that those violins, right? Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> so you are you are a guy who has, in fact, defied the cultural left. You are guilty of doing comedy while not being a leftist. What what do you think when you're looking at Kanye West uh, on Twitter? Good for him. I mean, uh, I, I admire him. That takes some courage to step out like that. And the fact that he's pushed all his chips in on Trump, I would say, well, the hashtag I put up is... Uh, Orange is the new black. <laughs> <laughs> the rap community is going to start going over to Trump and they're doing an old type election at that point. Because I really think there is some crazy lock on people's. Uh, I, I love when he talks about freeing your mind up. And then I saw another. Listen, I'm not a. I'm not a uh, Plenty the Elder of the hip hop world, but I saw a guy named Chance the Rapper say that yeah. Being black doesn't mean you have to vote Democrat. And I thought, oh, man, in whatever, uh, I guess right now it's probably in Terry McAuliffe's office, uh, Dem Central, uh, they must be they must be freaking out if this uh, if, if that uh, firewall is going to start breaking. They, they would have nobody. I mean, if they if they lost the black vote, they would never win another election, basically. Um, um, listen, if people just started getting free thinking, you know, I, I think it always sounds to William Shockley when you start talking about black vote. I'm just saying if people are if any, uh, you know, gender or any uh, racially defined group or any of that just started freeing their thoughts just to hear Kanye West say, Obama was president for eight years and nothing good happened in Chicago. I thought, boy, I, I, you, you never see where it's coming from. But it, it's almost like it reminds me of uh, uh, Keir DeLay in 2010, not 2001, where he says, you remember he's talking, he says, it's beautiful. He like he can like see the thing breaking down. He says, it's beautiful. Oh, my God, so many stars. And I was thinking when I was watching Kanye, I thought, boy, who would have thought Kanye West when I would watch him so insolent and I think publicly drunk, drag, grabbing a young girl's, uh, you know, uh, Grammy out of her hand and being a bit of an embarrassment, and you think there's life. You never can predict it. I think he might set off something here. That uh, well, all I would say is, oh my God, so many stars. Because if, if if people start getting illuminated, listen, there's going to be some things on the right that don't make any sense to me. But I'm telling you, there are more on the left right now. This the rigidity of the lockstep has gotten comical. At this point, when I watch the North Korean army in a missile parade, I think, wow, they're looser than we are. <laughs> That's a scary thought. That's a, has, has it I mean, you you have been 
it seems to me fearless for all I know you go home and hide in the corner and, and tremble but you you seem fearless in expressing your opinion you've been on Bill O'Reilly which puts a target on your head have you have you suffered for this politically uh, I mean professionally yeah, I think suffered is an overused word in this call <laughs> you should go into the Walter Reed or Bethesda or St. Jude's suffering uh, listen I, I I got to sleep with myself at night. It doesn't matter how big my house is, you know, like, which is one reason the book probably stay in lockstep in Hollywood. At the end of the day, you're heading to a spot that's uh, like a, a roadrunner cut out of your, your body. And you got to sleep in the, in the floor. It doesn't matter to me about being decried. I'm a 64 year old man. If I've taken the, the long ramble, from a, you know, being born through 64 and I haven't learned that you, should, you don't have to care about what other people think as long as you're trying to be a civil human being, trying to be you know, reasonably kind. Uh, to, I, I see that in that Kanye tweet where he just said, I'm, I'm sick of the thought police. For God's sakes, what am I supposed to do? Like, uh, you, you know, go through the whole cycle and then ask somebody on the view to pre-approve my death rattle when I get to the end? Uh, that's not the way life is. So then what do you think when you see, I was talking before about Hank Azaria, who I admire so much. I mean, my, my father was a, a really good voice man. And Azaria is up there with uh, Mel Blanc in terms of the, his talent uh, at doing voices. And he has to stand down and apologize for doing Apu. I mean, does, does that send a chill up your spine? Mm -mm. I don't care. I, I'm a huge fan. Hank Azaria can do what he wants. I'm, the, I'm, I'm leading Dennis Miller's life. And there's too much second guessing right now going on social media and all that god i look at social media i think never have lives less lived been more scrutinized you know what i mean it's it's like we're we're putting everything under the jeweler's loop it's like we do this bruder film 10 times a day on other people's <laughs> intimate moments i remember once i met carl malden backstage at a video conference uh, it was like an award ceremony. He was getting a lifetime video. I also remember that Leonard Malt was like I'm seeing that night. And one of the sub junks of the, uh, the the evening was they had to get the porn award out. No, it wasn't the porn award. It was just video, all of it. But one of them, you know, a big seller's porn. I remember Leonard Malt had to give the award to a film called Edward Penis Hand. Which is so hard because he's in his tux and he reluctantly opens the envelope because the winner is Edward Pierce says, and I'm in the back row with Carl Malden. We're dying. And I say to Malden, and this stuck with me forever, I say, you know, Carl, um, I know you're, he, he was talking about Ilya and how he wanted to push, and indeed he did get him an Oscar at Kazan down the road. I said, I, I'm always wondering how Bud Schulberg and Ilya Kazan, who to me are the proletariat town criers, I mean, literally, the, the, the Gutenberg of proletariat uh, ethos in this country, would name names, even if they were already named names, in front of the U.S. committee. I remember uh, Malden looked at me, he said, it was a long time ago, Dennis, and you weren't there. And he said, can I tell you something? You don't know how brave you are until they chain you to the radiator. And man, it took my breath away. Yeah. It's true. So when you ask me about Hank there I don't know Hank there. He can do whatever he wants about this animated figure on a longest running TV show ever, much beloved. If we live in a time now where there are people out there who are going to try to ruin and break into a thousand pieces Hank Azaria's rice bowl because he does the voice of a Quickie Mart owner on an end of the thing. Two things should go off in your head. The Simpsons just passed Gunsmoke as the longest running, most popular show in the history of television. And in the space of maybe one or two years, the curtain has come down, prohibited it. And if Azaria chooses to go through with it, he will have to be boycotted or ruined. Now, you can look at Hank Azaria and say, it hurts me to say, Hank Azaria can do whatever he wants because it is a complete goat stuff out there and anybody can do what they want. Yeah, no, I I, under, I totally understand that. And the, and the point, the Malden point is very, very well taken. I guess, you know, when I look at, at the, the late night comics, for instance, I don't think Steve Colbert is a bad guy. I don't think, you know, each one of them is a bad guy. But it does seem a little unfair to me that they're all on one side. It's it's when they gang up like that. I know they're not each one is not individually culpable. But the fact that you cannot turn on late night TV and see somebody support Trump, it seems just a little bit like like 62 million Americans are being ganged up on. Well, I'll go the other way. I don't know Colbert at all, so I don't know what sort of guy he is. And all I know is he was 
he was third and now he's one, I think, or maybe he's, I can't even remember, but I do remember he got an unexpected, you know, to me, it's like when I look at the hashtag on social media, I always think, wow, nice second act for the tic-tac-toe grid. Plucky little symbol hanging in there, a career that was stalled, then it gets an unexpected boost uh, from the hashtag thing. Well, that, that's sort of like Alec Baldwin and Colbert. I don't think they were, I, I, I don't know if they were stalled, but it wasn't as hot as it is now. So Trump's come in and give them a bit of a boost. But I'm saying if you're looking for fairness, you've got to look for fairness in a, a field that might be fair, show business from its very core, from its very birth. Whenever, I don't know, you see those people slow dancing in gauze dresses way back when, and then the, the moon rocket gets stuck in the, the moon guy's eyeball. You know, from, from the beginning of time, Hollywood has been an unfair business that's predicated a lot on cosmetic issues and breaks and uh, rough rough young guys running rough shot over people who are needy because they want to be insured. You know, the, to think, uh, well, I find it unfair on late night television. I'm telling you, you've got your, uh, you've got your binoculars on the wrong field. <laughs> <For fairness. laughs> All right. Fair enough. When, when you do your, you're doing a net, uh, you're taping your 10th stand up special, right? Is it, is this, who, who's this for? But I went back and ordered them all. It's my ninth, and uh, I did eight for HBO, one for, I think it was called uh, Epic. And now this ninth one is just for a, a nice gentleman who then sells it to individual platforms. Uh, I got it. Okay. So now is your material still uh, political when you go out and do stand-up? I'd say it's around two-thirds not political and a third political. Because once you're the weekend update guy they're going to expect you to do topic driven stuff but then again i don't want to go out there and turn this into a you know a, a, a sort of a falcon in the snowman dinner table argument with people i want to go out and make them laugh so around two thirds one third that, so how is how has trump affected the field i mean the way i look at some of these comics trump has become like the f word they say it and that people laugh but it's not always that that funny uh but he is a character. You couldn't invent the guy. You were incredibly uh, hilarious about Obama. It, it, how do you feel about Trump? I mean, where do you stand on the Donald? Well, his tweeting makes me laugh out loud. To me, Trump doesn't drink, so lighting up asshats on Twitter is a cognac before bed. And, uh, you know, I look at Trump, and I don't get all of it, but I'll say this. I get a lot of it. And to me, he's a Ted Neely and Jesus Christ superstar. He realizes what a corrupt, crap three-card money game the pharisees are running in the temple he just comes over and flips out over the table he'll figure out the rest of it later uh, are there days when i think he's a little uh crazy yeah there are but let me say this about trump's craziness i think his outer voice is an accurate depiction of his inner voice warts and all i don't think hillary clinton's inner voice and outer voice have ever even had a couple of <laughs> <laughs> be in, not interesting to introduce them. So, so uh, if I was Trump, I'd call Hillary and try to hire her to deal with the Stormy Daniels thing. I'd say, listen, <laughs> Hill, Donald, uh, you know this drill. And you're out of work. You've been cheated on more frequently than a blind woman playing Scrabble with gypsies. Can you take over this thing for me? <laughs> <laughs> Make America great again, one job at a time. So I, I have to ask you this. Uh, who makes you laugh now? What, what, who's funny that you like? Brian Regan. Brian Regan's the best stand-up in the world. Jerry's the evergreen. He's the greatest stand-up of our 25-year you know, era. So Brian Regan and uh, the, the new guy who just destroys me is Sebastian Maniscalco. I don't know if you know him. It's a bit of an odd name. So M-A-N-I-S-C-A-L-C-O, Sebastian Maniscalco. Uh, Brian Regan, as I said, I think is the best, and uh, just hanging David Spade and Dana Carvey at dinner. I, I have to be resuscitated. <laughs> All right. So uh, my, my final question, you're going out and you're going to do appearances uh, Saturday, May 19th at the Riverside Theater in Milwaukee, Friday, June 15th at NYCB Theater at Westbury on Long Island. Do you ever run into political trouble, like do the people protest or anything like that? That people get pissed at you, but come on, man, get it. Listen, I don't tell you. you gotta, we got to get rhino skin about this. <laughs> Honest to God, the day you find yourself going back to a day's in and laying on the bed and saying somebody didn't like me, <laughs> get your life together. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> it 
say this. I'm not out to actively piss people off, but I can't go back and say, uh, did I alienate a fellow human today? You can see the Internet. You could put up that you cured cancer, and some people would troll you. So who cares what people think? You know, that's all that's changed, because I think people were always this acrimonious with each other. But back in, you know, Torquemada's age, you didn't know how pissed off people were at each other. Now everybody's little mental burp is put up in 100. Warhol was a genius in retrospect, saying everybody would be famous for 15 minutes. He was probably a little too optimistic. It doesn't even take that. You can be famous. And, you know, last time I saw fame bars, at there are bars at this little, I was at a dwarf's wake. Now, listen, I got to pitch one more thing. I'm doing a uh, podcast called The Dennis Miller Option, and I'll leave it at that. People can find it on Apple or Podcast One, but I'm talking about the world. I did one about sports, but a lot of people don't follow sports, so I'm doing the sports one, and now I do The Dennis Miller Option. I'm sorry to hammer it, but I owe it to the people who uh, get, you know, gave me the gig to get out there and sell it because it's new. So thank you, Andrew. You're a good, good cat. I appreciate your time. Hey, thanks a lot, Dennis. I appreciate it. All right. Later, kid. So that was a perfect example of what I was saying, right? Right. That's the attitude. That's the attitude you need. You can't go back to your hotel and worry that you offended anybody. You know, it's just it's life is too short. You got to sleep with yourself. You got to live with yourself. I mean, that's it. That's what it takes. Take that attitude and all those guys who uh, frighten you, who make you feel worried about things. They all vanish. They got no power if you have that attitude.